Hello, my friends. Welcome to Ascension Consciousness with Glacia Rain podcast. So this is um, going to be about understanding our spiritual journey today. I wanted to talk about this, and I know a lot of you are really pretty far along in your spiritual journey, but some of you may not be. Um, some of you may just be at the beginning of it as well. So our spiritual journey typically starts with a spiritual awakening. And the spiritual awakening can be so challenging when it happens that it can put you into a dark night of the soul, which we can see many of the people in the population right now are going through a dark night of the soul. Um, that has There's a lot of different symptoms of the dark night of the soul that I'm not going to go into right now. I do have a class about it and I have a book coming out about it as well. Um, but that, you know, in a nutshell, the dark night of the soul and the first spiritual awakening that you have, um, you start to notice the ascension symptoms and feel really uncomfortable in the world around you. Um, you notice a lot of changes in how you perceive reality or how you perceive yourself or others, your points of views change and such. And it's extremely uncomfortable because typically you recognize that what you believed to be true about the world isn't true about the world or maybe it's something greater is true. And in religion, a lot of people have this when they were raised with religion and they choose to... Um, take their mind into a different direction other than that belief system and they have to kind of face those different beliefs that were handed to them or that were programmed into them and um, you know ask questions to get out of them and kind of have that awakening where wow you know what I believe to be true isn't true or life isn't what I thought it was so what is it what's the purpose what's the meaning right and that opens up a lot of heavy feelings when you start asking questions like that or you know one of my favorite questions which still never really has a full answer is where did we even come from you know I was having a discussion with my son this morning my oldest son he's 22 and we were talking about the simulation and the divine organic matrix and the inverted grids and and why we would even be doing this and different levels of awareness. It was just such a great conversation this morning. But overall, he was asking, like, why would we do this? <laughs> and many of us, when we're challenged or we don't really want to be doing what we're doing, we ask that question, like, why would I ever choose this? I would never do this. But when you're getting what you want, you would choose it. You know, when you're having a great time and you're having fun, if you go on a carnival ride as a kid, you get off it. If you didn't like it, you don't want back on, right? But if you did like it, you go right back and get in that line. So really, when you're getting what you want and you're having joy, you want more of it. It's very natural to not want to be here when you're not getting what you want. But really, that comes from a misunderstanding of your energetics and how they impact reality to get what you want, right? It's just a, a misunderstanding of how energy works and how this reality works if you're not getting what you want. So um, we go through a series of breakdowns and breakthroughs. When And this is ongoing in the ascension process, but at the very beginning of a spiritual awakening, you go into a major breakdown, but it could be preceded by a major breakthrough, so you look out at the world and suddenly, you know, you see there's so much more to it than you thought. So much is possible. You know, I remember when I, um, it was validated, like psychic abilities were validated to me when I was a kid. And I remember how excited and inspired I became because I already felt like they were real, you know. And so um, the breakthrough for me was like, wow, this is real. I, I'm feeling something and it's true. And then the breakdown happens when everybody around you is like, that's not real. It can't happen. It doesn't happen, which obviously we know it does. But um, the breakdowns and breakthroughs are huge, but they happen because we are asking for more and they are directed by our spirit. Okay. So some of us, when we, when we think about ourselves as an identity, 
and ourselves as a spirit, we tend to make a separation as if they're two different beings, but they're two different levels of the same being. So two different aspects of self, right? So your spirit can be guiding this whole thing, but your human identity is like, what the actual F is going on? I don't want to be doing this. This is not fun. But your spirit is in charge, not the ego, right? And so um, this is where we ask for something greater. I don't know anybody who's saying, I want my life to get worse. You know, even though some people unknowingly ask, how could it get any worse? And then, of course, the universe has to demonstrate it to them. <laughs> but, but that's just because they don't understand how they're initiating their subconscious mind to demonstrate it to them, right? Um, so when we ask for something greater, what we already have has to change in some way. The mindset that we currently have has to shift if we want something greater. It has to shift to resonate with whatever that greater thing is that we've asked for, right? So in our spiritual awakening and the ascension process, we really can't compare our process to another person's process. I know people do this all the time. And so many people reach out to me asking about the symptoms. And I love giving the symptoms. But at this point, so many people are at varying stages. And the activations are just happening back to back now that I literally could tell you almost all of the symptoms every single day as the symptoms because somebody's going through them, right? And we do go through some really big uh, similar symptoms uh, as they move through the collective as a wave. So it's not like everybody on the same day at the same moment has a headache, but it might be that we're having all these upgrades in our consciousness and in our ability to perceive light or different things like that. And our brain has to shift, our eyes have to shift a bit to kind of be rewired energetically or etherically. And, um, and so it might be that we end up having for a couple of weeks, a lot of people complaining about headaches, right? And so, but not at the same exact moment, it might be that you have one. And then a couple days later, your partner, or your friend has one for a couple days. And, you know, so we watch it kind of move through the collective that way. Um, but overall, the ascension symptoms come from the energies coming in, colliding with the energies that already exist. So it's a it's kind of a recoding and rewriting that we're going through on a uh, spiritual DNA level. So that recodes our entire expression of our body and what's capable for our body in um, perception and and also in our ability to travel in our consciousness and level up in our awareness and all of that, right? So um, we also have a lot of ups and downs in, in the spiritual awakening process, right? We have to examine our beliefs. And like I said earlier, with religion, people end up examining their beliefs. Like, why do I believe that? You know, because what we're taught as children is what we believe. And then anything that challenges that can feel... Like it's challenging our very presence or our right to be here. And so it can be really hard to look at your beliefs. The ego never wants to be wrong. If you are still catering to your ego, then you will be challenged and you will suffer. So the ego is here to help serve the purpose of helping us maintain the perception of separation so we can make choices as individuals and also have the cause and effect as individuals, right? But the higher self or the source self is really here guiding you to your greatest good. Your ego is not going to guide you to your greatest good. It's going to flip-flop you all over the place, okay? It's very unstable. Um, and so when we have to face that part of ourselves and face our shadows and, and acknowledge that we didn't know something or that maybe what we thought we knew and we were completely wrong about or we integrated new information and now we recognize that we didn't understand it the way we thought we did or whatever right so being humble in this process is really big and recognizing you don't have to know everything and it's okay if you don't know how could you know everything right it's okay to be where you're at it's okay to ask questions and that's one of the biggest things that is a problem for uh, humans in general is that it seems like people are afraid to ask questions because they don't want to look stupid or they don't want to look as if they don't know the answer. 
But what's worse is to pretend you know and keep moving along in your life when you don't have the information you need, you know? So being wrong, if we look at that and change it, so instead of being wrong, being curious, so then we don't have to look at anything as like, it is absolutely this way, I'm right, you're wrong. And we can look at it more as like, oh, that's an interesting idea. So then we can actually look at things without a negative um, energy of resistance because the ego is going to resist if you feel wrong, right? And this isn't about the ego, so I'll keep going on the other <laughs> subject. Um, so when we, when we question our beliefs, our belief system um, creates our foundation in life, right? So then our foundation starts to crumble and then we start to feel super lost in our spiritual awakening. And we feel lost because our identity and our trajectory in our life was based on what we believed life to be, what we believed was possible, what we believed are the rules of life. Um, and so when we start to have holes in this, in our belief system, or we start to bring in new beliefs and they kind of collide with old beliefs and stuff, our whole foundation gets rocky and it feels like somebody's kind of tipping the boat right? So then we feel uncomfortable and that initiates even more growth. And I love questions, right? I, I think I say this all the time, but asking questions creates a change. It initiates a shift in energy or a pivoting in the energies. And then you can start taking off in the direction of the answer, right? So um, that's going to be something that's necessary to keep going on our spiritual awakening as a collective is to keep asking these questions and to be willing to have discussions without like the blame of like um, blame, shame, guilt, and fear involved with um, needing to be right or wrong. And instead we can have discussions to where we really try to understand each other and create cohesion and unity in our communication. You know, so listening to understand instead of listening to be right or listening to make your point, or listening to make a, a defense against whatever they're saying, right? So a lot of people listen in order to have a rebuttal, you know? So they listen, then they speak from their ego. But if we could listen and really integrate other people's points of view as a possibility, it keeps our mind open. It keeps us flexible in our ideas and our beliefs and an open mind, can receive all kinds of information, but a closed mind doesn't. So um, now when we level up in our belief systems, right, this, this happens because we choose it and it's also happening because you're here on the planet, right? So there's an aspect of this ascension process that it's happening within the matrix We've got um, the programmed matrix that operates, right? The organic matrix and the inverted grid. So the scripted matrix is the uh, programmed inverted grid, right? And so as we start to get these new light codes, we shift out of that inverted grid system. And so then we start shifting more into the organic grid, and accessing more of our true selves and integrating more new light codes. And this is where we're doing a lot of the purging. Oops. We're doing a lot of the purging and a lot of the um, clearing of the toxic templates of our past, right? Because as coded beings, we have codes. So we have templates for these codes and we have programs that these codes run. So if you alter the codes in a program, the program is different, right? So if you think about it in basics of like a computer operating system and your human operating system, we have a lot of viruses, okay? And I mean like computer virus. So we have a lot of that going on. So mind viruses, we'll say, right? So this would be a misunderstanding at a mental level, but we know the mental level is what shapes our reality. So if you have a misunderstanding at that level, then there's a misconception about reality. And this is all the stuff that we're, we're looking at and having to change. Now with our spiritual DNA, 
that got altered, right, by these other beings that invaded, and now it's being restored. We're being recoded back to our divine blueprint after that was tampered with. So this takes time because with every change we make, we have to be able to hold the energies necessary for that change, right? So you are the your vibrational expression is the sum total of all of your actions, your choices, your beliefs, your feelings, thoughts, everything, right? So when you shift some of that, you create a different energetic charge than you held before in your field. And so we're tuning ourselves with that charge into these higher timelines. And that's basically what this spiritual journey is. So um, I'm going to wrap this, this up here. And I just want to thank you for your time. If you'd like to get some coaching with me, you can check out my website and get a personal session with me. I also have a blog on my website and um, some other things too. So feel free to check it out. And please check out my YouTube channel, Glacier Rain. And I'll see you there. Thanks so much. Much love to you and your spiritual journey.